Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to more family friendly gaming with Soap the Great. I am here on the Hypermind modded server playing some FTB Infinity Evolved. I'm going to switch that up from the last couple times. Ooh, lag spike. Nimson just left. Ooh, say goodbye. Hmm. Hopefully he's not having some connection issues. Or the server's not having some issues. Oh, we'll see. Let's see. Is there anything there? Tick lag? Nope. So he probably was just done with his quick session for the time being. We're going to walk over here. And today we're going to be working on a little project as we're wont to do. Let me tell you something. So a few episodes ago, I put in an order with Benito about a Skystone Bee. And guess what? He has delivered a Skystone Bee. He put it in this apiary right here. Well... He put it in another one. I've moved it around to work on some automated processing. But uh, you can see he also gave me some production upgrades. So this thing is producing quite well. So let's take a look in the ME system. It's all currently going into there. And we're at uh, 3600 Skystone, which is wonderful. You can already see I have been using some of it. And I also um, mentioned that earlier. I also cleared out the meteorite that is just to the north of our island. We've got another one a little further up right here. But I have not bothered taking that out. Really cool how they generate. But uh, we're not worried about that today. We're worried about a more automated way of doing this. So you can see the design kind of coming together. I've been using the resonant exchanger to change out the cobble with the small brick. But that small brick, let me let me just show you what we need to do. We're going to say Skystone small brick. See this right here? We'll click this. You can see you have to craft the Skystone small brick. You can also chisel it, but you have to craft it primarily. So you craft it from regular Skystone brick, which is itself crafted from Skystone block. Also can be chiseled. But then the Skystone block itself, you have to smelt regular Skystone. So to get this 3,600 blocks of Skystone to be small brick, we have to smelt and then run it through a crafting window twice. Guess what? I don't want to do that by hand, especially for something of this footprint. You see, I've got a lot, a lot of ground to cover. I've already, I can't, I don't even know how many Skystone small brick I have crafted and placed, but it's only covered that for the time being. We've got a whole lot more to do. We've got to go all the way around this castle. So I've got a little project that we're going to be working on today right here. This is not its final position, but this works. What it's going to do is it's going to get one of my industrial apiaries away from that area right there. We're going to move it over here under the reactor or close to under the reactor the reactor I don't think is gonna move who knows we'll see long-term plans I don't know but I do know that I need a better crafting area so we need to get stuff away from there and get get a I mean that's it's been good but this is not ideal we we're kind of limited in space now we're running out of places to throw deep space or not deep space deep storage units I was thinking of deep space nine there um, deep storage units and and overall we're just really really limited in space so we need to clear that out so we can get a better situation going for us so we're going to work on an automated thing for making the skystone brick we're going to do it right here and the first thing that we're, we need to do is go through a huge set of crafting so again you've heard complaints of people saying you spend so much time in the crafting window today's no different we've got all of these crafting stations to get through and some of them have already had plenty of crafting already done. So we're going to be using Steve's Factory Manager, another mod. And this one's pretty cool. So the first order of business is we need the Machine Inventory Manager block itself. Fairly simple, not too expensive. I mean, the piston. So it's, it's a, that's a little expensive, but it's not terrible. But we're going to get that. And then we'll take up that crafting station as well and then we need some inventory cables these are 
I'm, I'm surprised. You get eight for this whole recipe, and these are block level. It does require weighted pressure plates. That's two gold apiece, but overall not too bad. We'll bring that one up as well. And then we need a redstone furnace because that does an automated version of the smelting. And then we also need a separate centrifuge. We're running, so the Skystone Bee produces Skystone and earthy combs, but you have to process the combs in a centrifuge. We need a, a dedicated centrifuge over here because it's um, this apiary is going to be over here, not over there. So the centrifuge requires a sturdy casing and we take that sturdy casing and put it into here. And we've got our centrifuge. We can bring these two. There we go. And now our redstone furnace, are you ready? This is a lot of crafting that has to be done. Pay close attention. I already had one copper gear, but here's a, another copper gear. Let's put it over here so you can kind of see it come together. We need a redstone reception coil because this thing does take redstone, it takes RF, redstone flux. That is the ultimate crafting recipe right there. So we'll put our redstone reception coil and copper gear in there. And then we need, can you guess? A machine frame we're gonna do the resonant version so we need an enderium gear and then we come here and put the enderium gear on this and you can already see that we've gotten a reinforced machine frame let's just take a look real quick the reinforced machine frame required a hardened machine frame and that required a basic so you can see all the way down we've got a lot of crafting to be done just to get to this point. Let's take our reinforced or our resonant and we'll put that into here and we've got our redstone furnace. All right, next up we need to look in our project bag, get out a tesseract and a diamond chest. Now, I went through a couple of designs for this thing. I showed Kondrick my first rendition and he said, you know, you can use Steve's factory manager to compact that. I looked into it. Sure enough, get ready for this, guys. Okay, this is the footprint we're going to be using, two by three. So we're going to take our inventory cable. We're just going to lay this out. This is not as compact as it could be, but it's uh, it's going to give me uh, a good, a better user experience, if you will. So we've got the inventory cable down, and then what we do? Oh, we forgot something. We need our B. Okay, so let's go get our B and we'll get that from the apiary right here let's just grab that okay good and we get that we don't need all of this other stuff but it does have some supplies that i will need namely the earthy comb that you may have just seen pop in so let's come over here and what we're going to do is take our industrial apiary we're going to put that right here and then Let's just get all the blocks on the bar that we need. This one, we're going to be using Soap Power Plus. We're going to be receiving energy and sending items. So there we go. And now we should still be getting power. And yep, Bob, your uncle, we're good. We don't need that anymore. We've got the diamond chest and we need redstone furnace and then our centrifuge and the machine manager. So we're gonna put a diamond chest there, put the redstone furnace right there, centrifuge right there, and the inventory manager right there. And this setup with a little bit of configuration is going to be, hopefully, the machine that we need. Now, what you do with Steve's factory manager is that you run a flow chart that gives you the ability to take a look at any inventory that is on the inventory cables or attached to the manager itself. So I said we could get a little bit more compact and the way we could do that is we could put the uh, factory manager down below this uh, chest right here and, and that would be more compact. But I like just seeing it right there and it's raining. Awesome. I just slept. Is anybody else on with me? Nope, by myself. Oh, and it's okay. It's nighttime. That's good. So we can get rid of the rain right quick. Nimson was on earlier. Well, there we go. Go away, rain. Thank you. So we can access any of these inventories that's attached to the machine manager. And we can move stuff into and out of all of those inventories. 
We can get to the redstone furnace. Is everything on there? We got one, two, three, four, five. Yep. All right. Now, this next piece, I'm going to have to do off camera. I just got. Oh, okay. Uh, Benito put something else in here. This thing generates XP for me as well, which is really cool. So, um, so yeah, we're. I'll, you know, I'll keep the earthy combs on me. But uh, yeah, I just got some XP from that. What I need to do is take care of the flow charting off camera because it's going to require some in-depth thinking. And I don't know that you necessarily want to see or hear the gears grinding on that. So I'm going to take care of that off camera. I'll bring you back, kind of give you a high level overview, and then we'll go from there and hopefully see it working. All right. See you in just a little bit. Well, we are back and I'm over here at the ME system taking a look at the numbers on the Skystone small brick. Just keep that in mind. Currently at 107, we're getting about one Skystone every five seconds or so. But let's go over here and take a look at the Steve's Factory Manager. All right, get ready. All right, this is a lot. This is a flow chart, and it might get rather complicated. So just bear with me. All right, this is how you program the Machine Manager. So we've got a few things in here. I have not gone through and renamed most of these flowchart items, mostly because it was getting very difficult for me to track what was input and output. I've redone this once already. So first things first, you start off in Steve's Factory Manager with a trigger of some form. I've got one going every five seconds, and then another one going every 10 seconds. So you could see that there. And so every five seconds we're going to be running this series of commands right here we split the trigger across five different inputs this one's going to be looking at the apiary this one's going to be looking at the diamond chest this one's also the diamond chest and i'll get to that in just a moment so most of these are diamond chests this one is also diamond chest this one's going to be the centrifuge over here so every 10 seconds it's going to look in the centrifuge and it's going to get every item that is magic wax or clay and then it's going to send that down into so right right here we're pulling in uh, control flow from two locations and sending that into the tesseract and we've got a whitelist there of small brick skystone magic wax and the clay as well okay so this line goes into the tesseract and then this line if you track that item all the way through goes to the tesseract as well now over here on the apiary, we've got to get two different types of items out. The problem here is that we can find skystone. Let's take a look and see if we can find earthy comb. Do you see that? Earthy does not show up right here. And earthy comb does not show up in any eye as well. So for some reason, the Magic Bees mod is not putting earthy comb into the any eye window and Steve's factory manager looks at that. So I've had to go with, instead of a whitelist and specifically say which items I want, I have to go with a blacklist and say, don't get stone. So it's going to be pulling everything out of the apiary window, all or the inventory that's not stone and send that to the diamond chest. And we've got a blacklist there not like we're doing anything but uh, next up is the diamond chest here and we're grabbing the sky stone and what we do from the sky stone there is we're going to put that into the inventory of the redstone furnace okay so there we go we got a white list and the redstone furnace is only going to be accepting that now there's nothing for the redstone furnace instead we use the standard behavior and we set output on the redstone furnace to the side and that's going to automatically put the smooth skystone brick back into the diamond chest where we then pull it back out with a whitelist and send that into a crafting window. So you're familiar with a crafting window, three by three square, and you can craft anything in here. So it's going to take a skystone block, turn it to skystone brick, and send that anything extra on the crafting window back to the diamond chest. And then our output is also the diamond chest. Over here, diamond chest as the input, and then we're whitelisting the sky, the skystone brick, the big brick, 
running that into a crafter, right? So a uh, regular brick is going to turn into a small brick in a crafting window, send anything extra that we've got to the diamond chest, and then the output goes to our tesseract over here. We're grabbing everything uh, that is not skystone, skystone block, or skystone brick. Again, it would be nice if the earthy comb was available. It's not, so instead we're sending everything that's not those three other blocks that would be in the system to the centrifuge where we then pick it up every 10 seconds. So, you can take a look sometimes as this thing runs. You won't see too much in here, but let me just show you real quick. We're going to put regular, uh, regular skystone in here. And what it's going to be doing is running through the redstone furnace. And you can see it come in here, and it does not last that long. Right? So every five seconds, it's going to be getting pulled to turn into brick. So let's come over here, take a look at our small brick. We're up to 117. And it should be a little bit more, um, yeah, so there we go. And just by virtue, yeah, you can see it coming in there. And what we can do is just load up that diamond chest with all of this sky stone. That's the other neat thing, since I'm using the chest as kind of an accumulator, if you will. I can just come in, throw all the sky stone in there that's already been made by this bee. And we're going to be getting auto crafted skystone small brick so yeah there we go we've got our automated solution for our ultimate construction block choice we'd already chosen it we don't have no well, there's nothing here specifically for this project this was just a one-off project so anyway there you go if I did not make complete sense. Feel free to ask me some questions in the comment section down below or on Twitter at MC Soap the Great. And, uh, but there we go. I'm playing with Steve's Factory Manager. We're going to be using that a whole lot more because it's fairly cheap. And once you set up the flowchart, this thing just runs. There's no, I mean, the, the time spent setting these things up is the input to it, but there's no long term cost associated with it. No RF that you have to spend, no fuel or anything for that matter. So, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, it seems kind of OP, but you know what? While it's in the pack, I'm going to use it. So there we go. We're going to be using it a whole lot more for controlling other things around here, including potentially our spawners. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but, yeah, there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed this installment of Family Friendly Gaming with Soap the Great. And uh, if you did, a like is always appreciated. If, if you didn't, let me know what I could improve. I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section down below or on Twitter at MCSoapTheGreat once again. And that's going to be it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.